Excellent. All right. I think we are a little bit slow here on the internet connection, but I think we're there. Okay. Awesome. Hey, everyone. Uh, Professor TDV here. Uh, we are back at it again this afternoon talking to an, another amazing uh, guest, um, my dear friend. I, you know, let me tell you about this woman here that we're going to talk to here today. <laughs> uh, I met Dalila in West Hollywood one night uh, looking just to just wash the day away. And I ended up at a place called East West. Mm -hmm. And um, this woman shows up and we had some friends in common and she sits down at the table and she's just holding court. <laughs> she's, telling, she's telling us about our day. And for the rest of us, telling us about, you know, our day was just, oh yeah, this is what I did. I did this, I did that. But with Dalila, it was, it was story time at, <laughs> at East West. And um, I, was, I was completely smitten in, in that moment. I was just uh, blown away by um, this woman. I was blown away by her storytelling. I was blown away by um, just her fearlessness of meeting new people and being engaging and dynamic. And uh, I, in that moment, in what, 2004, maybe? 2000? It was a long time ago. Ooh, girl. <laughs> it was a um, long time ago. <laughs> I saw, I saw, I saw, um, I just saw a lot of energy in life. And she has not, she has not let us down from that. And by us, I mean the two people that were on earlier today, Red Summer and Gloria Bigelow. I mean, I, I'm, I'm trying to pair people each day that have similar um, relationships, either in the industry or the first day with, with um, Tiffany and Darnell. I paired two people who were former students of mine who work in the industry in various capacities, young pe people I, I, I met when they were at a very different stage in their career to where they are now. Today's three guests, Red, uh, Red Summer, Gloria Bigelow, and Dalila Ali Raja, are three women who have, um, who are three of my closest friends um, beyond the industry. These are people who, if I'm having one of those days, they're the call. And, um, but they're also three of my most amazing inspirations, people that I have bounced off ideas, people who I just sit and I watch and I marvel at, people whose drive is inspiring, people who will reinvent themselves every other day to be successful in the things that they are passionate about, meaning if this way is not the way, well, I'm gonna try a different way. Um, so that versatility, that flexibility, um, the comfort in being uh, dynamically themselves is what I'm so drawn to. And you're going to feel the same way meeting Dalila Ali Raja today. My friend, my, my dear friend. Um, hi, darling. Hey, thank you for hi, welcoming me into your space. And thank you, beautiful young humans who are walking through this world and creating our next set of stories for sharing your time and space with me. So Man, broke. thank you. Thank you. When did you, I, I recognize that painting there behind you. Uh, tell us, tell us about that before we get into formal introductions. Um, so I also, I, I do visual art too, but mostly just for like ease and joy. Occasionally I've sold pieces, but this Buddha, I started doing Buddhas and started selling, I used to do readings in a crystal shop. And um, I started doing gridding of crystals on the back of paintings for people to purchase. Um, but one of the first ones I did was for myself because it's always like you got to self-care first, like take care of home first. So, um, and weirdly, the first one I did, I actually gave as a gift, which is what made me realize I actually need to take care of myself first because I was displacing where, where I was putting my energy. And so I painted this one for myself to like ground my energy and my spirit. It has a whole bunch of crystals on the back that do stuff like clear energy, raise energy, bring love, um, balance out the space, keep 
me in a good place, all of those things um, that carry that into whatever room it's put in. So yeah, I started doing more and more of them because I wanted like something that had that kind of energy. And even it has like um, dust from some crystals in the paint on the top that do things like clear spaces and raise energy. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, you went away. I can't hear you. I, you know what? I tried to, I muted my mic. So it just stayed on you, but I was like, yes, dust in the energies. And yes, <laughs> all yeah. that. Very yeah. dust and sprinkles. I'm one of those types. Y'all are going to get that real quick. I'm real like fairy angel loving, like airy fairy type, um, but very also anchored in our history and, um, our communities and our storytelling is a powerful way to heal and to change the world. I have been a long fan of sci-fi storytelling in particular things like Twilight Zone, Outer Limits when I was a kid mm -hmm. to um, you know, an assortment of sci-fi movies and, and different things like that. Mm -hmm. However, I am still somewhat embarrassed to say that it wasn't until I met Dalila that I knew much of Octavia Butler's work. I knew who she was, I just hadn't read her work yet. And uh, any of you who've been to my office and have seen the images of um, the characters from Genesis or have heard me talk about my, my, my superhero story, Genesis, uh, know how important that is to me. Well, Dalila was my first sounding board. Dalila was the person where I was like, girl, I got an idea. And she was like, okay, well, let me have, let me ask you this. Have you read like the, the black godmother, the godmother, black, white, or otherwise of sci-fi writing? Have you read? And I was like, mm, uh, no, I'm just busy writing. I don't know if I have time to, and she was like, you don't have to stop everything you're doing. Here's your reading list. And in that moment, I became a student of Dalila and not just um, learning about Octavia Butler, but also the spiritual work that she does. Um, I got my first tarot card reading from her. Um, <laughs> and it was on point. I, it was on it, point. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I'm i closing up now because I'm like, yeah, I felt exposed. I was like, <laughs> she knew me. And it was, and and, and this work is important in the realm of uh, creativity and the entertainment industry as a, as a business, but in terms of the spirituality of being creative is so important. And I don't think anyone has helped touch that for me than Dalila. And so I hope she talks some about that today, about the importance of being in tune to your spiritual self as you go to be creative, especially if you're, you have an interest in being a writer, first you must read, read, read Octavia Butler and a score of other people um, who are writing for um, black, a black sensibility, sensitivity in sci-fi, number one. Um, but it's important as a writer to write the spirit of a character, not just what a character does. You know, we talk about story arc, you know, it isn't enough to just say this character lives in this city and this is the job they have. And this is the person that they're, they're engaged with or married to in their universe. You gotta get to the crust of that character, to that person. You have to really understand what motivates them. And sometimes it's not just about where they are and who they know and what they do. It, it's about what drives them at their core. What's their spirit? Um, doing so this is this is my spirit friend right here she's she's going to talk some about that today Dalila uh, I'm going to ask you uh the format you've heard me talk about the format a little bit already but you're going to introduce yourself who you are and what you do in the world we're going to tie you and all of us together by asking you how how are you faring during the pandemic how how are things going for you um right now and then I'm going to kill the mites and let you have at teaching these young people a thing, whatever it is you feel inspired to teach them. And then I'll open the mics and they will engage back in a Q&A and we'll see what happens after that. Okay, okay. so tell us who you are and what you do and, and just introduce yourself. I'm Dalila Ali Raja. I am a storyteller and I guess kind of a griot in certain ways, but in a lot of different mediums. So 
mostly by trade and actor. That's where all my training is. That's what my undergraduate degree and my master's degree are in is acting like performance arts. Um, but I'm also a writer and a producer, um, uh, a kind of like get it done type. I was as a brown skinned black woman, especially when I first started working, there just wasn't a lot of roles for us. So a part of my thing is like, if you, if they are not calling you to it or they're not casting you in it, then you need to create work for yourself um, and finding kind of creative and different ways to approach getting those things done. Um, yeah, I mean, that's that's my main thing. Like I've, I've been doing like stage uh, and also film, commercials, television, um, thank God, right before um, all this went crazy pants, like very, like I shot something literally the last day before LA took it from 50 people down to 10 people. We were the only thing shooting, um, but that's going to help me because as much as some people poo poo on commercials and look down on them, uh, they have been my <clears throat> Sorry, sorry, miss. Um, what's going on? Oh, this is one of those hijackers. Huh? Somebody's hijacking the, the feed. It's a, it's a, it's a, somebody who's tried hacked into the zoom. Fuck you, fuck you, fuck nigger, you. fucking nigger, fuck you. fucking niggers, niggers. Fuck you, oh, God fuck bless you. Fucking shit. You don't have. Fucking niggers, niggers, niggers. Y'all are so mean. <laughs>